What's up guys, in today's video we are going to be learning how to use Shaper 3D to create a simple 3D model. In this video I'm going to create a dog collar in the shape of a bone with my dog's name and phone number on it. Then I'm going to 3D print it out and show you the results. So here's a quick sneak peek of the final result with my dog, but let's go ahead and get started. Alright, I'm going to walk you through the process from beginning to end. Take about 18 minutes, so check it out. I'm just going to click a new project here. We're going to see how quickly I can create this. I'm also pretty new to the software, but it's very intuitive. So the first thing I'm going to do is sketch and I'm going to create, I'm going to go to the top view and I'm going to create a rectangle. We're going to change it to the center point and we're going to grab our center origin here. I've already used a little caliber and I think about 50 millimeters is the right size. Uh, we're going to make it a little bit bigger because the text gets kind of small. So we're going to go 60 millimeters by 30. This is just going to be our outline shape here. And we can actually make this a construction line. This is basically just kind of an outline where if you extrude it, it doesn't, if you extrude your sketch, the construct line won't extrude with it. This is just kind of a perimeter area. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and create some circles. We will create these about, actually we'll do 20. 20 millimeters in diameter. I'm gonna exit sketching and then move this guy over. Gonna line it up there. We want a little bit of overlap here from the center, so we'll go down about two lines. This is the center line here. I'm going down two lines right about there. All right, so now I'm going to click on the outer edge of this line, hit copy, bring it down, and put this right about there, which should be pretty symmetrical. Then we're going to do the same thing here. You click off a copy, click it again, then you can drag another one over. And this is the center point, so Actually, we just want it touching the outer wall. Probably 40 millimeters, yep. And then, yeah, it's the right height, so we'll copy one more. 16 millimeters, okay. Cool, so we have a pretty symmetrical shape. Now we're going to sketch in a rectangle in the middle. Instead of center, we're going to do diagonal, and we're just going to drag from the center of this to the center of that. We may actually want to go over. Let's do this. Okay, so we'll bring that there. And then we will bring this one up a little more. I'm going to redo that control Z. We will do the rectangle again. We're going to start instead of in the center. We're going to start a little bit above that. Okay. So that gives us more area to write with. Okay. Now that we've got the basic shapes of the dog bone, we're going to trim out the areas that we don't need. So we're only going to leave the outer edge of these round circles here. And then this is the center of the dog bone. Let's get rid of the outer edges. Oh, I clicked off. Go back to trim. Clicked off again. Okay, and then we can remove this. Okay, so we've got a pretty good dog bone shape there. Let's remove these uh, 
construction lines here as well. Just trim those out. All right, so yeah, kind of like that. That works. All right, so now we can um, go ahead and extrude this. So I'm going to exit sketching. I'm going to click on this, and then I'm going to move the view to more of a front view. I'm going to raise this up five millimeters. Okay. Now we got a bone that's about five millimeters thick here. Go ahead and click on all the edges, shift, and left click on every top edge. Okay, then I'm going to, what's it called? Uh, I forget the word, it starts with the CH. Chamfer, chamfer, or fillet. Actually, I think it's called fillet. This is doing a chamfer. Fillets have more of a beveled edge and chamfers have more of a angled straight edge, which is better for 3D printing. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. We're gonna go one millimeter just like we did on the top. Okay, now we got a little bone here. And Next thing we need to do is add some writing on it. So we can go to add, and then you can add text. I'm gonna type my dog's name, it's gonna be Luna. You just wanna find a font that works. Uh, I like the way quicksand looks, and we'll do like probably 10 millimeters. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so it's underneath on bottom here. So we're gonna go ahead and drag this up five millimeters high so we can see where it is and that aligns with the top. Then I'm gonna go from a top view. Okay, for some reason it's upside down. And we'll just rotate this 180. Bring it down. All right, so that's pretty big. I like how big it is, but we got to have room for the phone number. Can we fit the phone number underneath that? Yeah, I think we can fit the phone number underneath it. We'll give it a try. So now that we've got that, we can click on each one of these. Shift, left click in the center of each letter. And then we can extrude that up. We're going to go up about one point. Uh, we'll just do 1.5. You don't want to go too high because when you 3D print this, you don't want it to be too skinny and too tall, otherwise it'll just get knocked off. I think 1.5 will work. We'll test that out. Now we're going to need to add a phone number. Actually add text. We'll do 8 for the millimeters here. Obviously, this isn't my phone number. Okay. Yeah, we're going to run into some issues with the height. And this is where you just got to do some experimenting. Probably have to go down to six millimeters. Bring it up five. Yeah, six should work. Okay. Do that. Let's get it in the center. Could even add some dashes in between it. Let's uh let's add some dashes. Text. Up five, down, go 
go right over the top view. Make sure you get it centered. And we'll click done, and then we need to click on each one of these letters here in the center. Shift and click the next one. Hopefully this will be wide enough for the 3D printer. These letters are pretty, pretty tiny, but we'll find out when we get it in the slicer if it'll work. Okay, we're going to bring it up 1.5. We could even bring it down to 1.0. Give it a little more dynamic look. Luna will be bigger and taller. Yeah, let's try that. Um, next thing we need to do is add a little area for the collar to connect to. So we're going to add another circle. Top view. Do the center point here. And Okay, we can go with 10. Okay. Uh so we're going to want this on the bottom cuz we want it to print flat. Exit sketching, we can just bring this up. We'll bring it up halfway, 2.5. Get in there close. Okay. Delete that area. Can't really tell if this is connected. That's just the sketch, so let's disable the sketch. Okay, so see we got like an area here and here. Uh, we really want to extrude this out so it goes all the way. One millimeter. All right, that's looking good. <clears throat> now we're just going to cut a hole in this. So to do that, we just sketch a hole right in the center of it. Top view, probably right about there. Make it about three point two, and then exit sketching. Go to the bottom and then just extrude this up and it will cut a hole right into it. All right, so last thing we want to do is chamfer these edges. Uh, one's going to be too much on this, so we'll go 0.5. And then on the circle, top and bottom, go 0.5 as well. It looks pretty clean and it should print pretty good on a 3D printer as well. It should be big enough for some sort of collar thing to fit right in the middle of it. So that's pretty much how you design it. I'm going to go ahead and export this out. I'm going to keep the Shaper 3D file as well. I always keep three different files, the Shaper 3D file, a step file. Step files actually print cleaner in some cases than STLs, and the STL file. Okay, so here's the Shaper 3D file. Export it again as the step file. If you ever need to reopen any of these in a different program, that step file should work. 
and then an STL file. Okay, so they're all three in there. Let me get that location again, right here. All right, let's open it up. And we're gonna open the uh, STL file. That's gonna open my bamboo slicer. There it is. We got a pretty, pretty clean 3D model. Now in here, I'm going to make this top color or this top text a different color. Uh, so using the AMS, you waste a lot of filament unless you do it like this. If you go to color painting and just kind of make it directly front facing, you can select a different color here and then you can just choose the height range and then color in the top layer. That's pretty close. Well, we don't wanna get that. Let's undo. Okay, that's good. All right, so I have a white color. Actually, I actually have a glow in the dark filament that's kind of white that I'm gonna use for the dog bone. And then I have a black like galaxy that I'm going to use for the letters. So uh, for the layer height, probably do 1.2 since this is to, so small. Um, strength, two is fine. Uh, we don't need any supports because we designed this without it. We don't need a brim because everything's flat on the bottom. Let's slice it and see what it looks like. All right. Looks pretty good. It's going to take 24 minutes. That uh, AMS switch to the different filament definitely adds a little time, but everything looks pretty clean. So I'm going to go ahead and print it. And this is where I select the white filament. I'm going to do the glow in the dark. That's in slot two <clears throat> for the blue base. And then I'm going to do the dark galaxy filament uh, on the top for the lettering. We'll go ahead and do a time lapse and we'll send it. That's pretty much it, guys. I'll show you the final product. But uh, yeah, would that take? Uh, let's see how long. 20 minutes. Made our own little dog tag and started the print. Not bad. All right, guys, here's a little footage of the Bamboo Labs P1P doing this print. I absolutely love this printer, especially with the AMS. Uh, but that pretty much wraps it up. Here's my dog, Luna. That's actually not her name. Her real name's Kinsey. But uh, I got another dog named Luna that had too much hair, and I couldn't film her. So I just put this tag on Kinsey. Uh, either way, this tag's a great item. You can customize them and make them and sell them on Etsy if you want. But I hope you learned something about 3D modeling or 3D printing. And uh, if you're looking for a 3D printer, I highly recommend the Bamboo Labs P1P. And if you want to see more videos like this, as always, subscribe and follow and hit that notification bell. And I'll be back soon to give you more beginner tips on 3D modeling, 3D printing, and advanced tips in Unreal Engine.